Do you ever have one of those builds where you want to try it, but there's always something a little bit more pressing, something newer, shinier, more exciting? A build with higher damage numbers, a build that looks a little bit faster, maybe a build with better defenses. There's always something that's stopping you from trying that one thing. And then you finally do. For me, this was Poisonous Concoction. The skill on release just looked a little bit too sus for me to jump in and have some faith. And that was a huge mistake on my part. Because my leak starter in 319 was Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder, and it's been the best league start experience I've had in actual years. Even on barely any gear, I was mapping efficiently. Poison Prolif feels great. Pathfinder means I have permanent flasks, and Poisonous Concoction did a lot more single target damage than I was expecting since I had heard from a lot of people that it has no boss DPS and that tier 16 maps will be a struggle, and I didn't find that to be the case at all. So today, I'm going to showcase my experiences with Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder, explain some of the decisions I made, and talk about how I crafted some of the items that I'm using. And the first mechanic that I feel obligated to explain isn't really a Poisonous Concoction mechanic. It's a Pathfinder mechanic. And that is that you have permanent flask uptime. I can take my hands off my keyboard and just sit in my hideout. My flasks will never fall off. This is certainly a lot easier if you're using low charge flasks, such as the elemental ones, or if you have a prefix with reduced flask charges used. This isn't magic, and it isn't super special. It's really just about clicking almost all the flask nodes on the tree, and clicking the flask nodes from Pathfinder. Personally, I went for both Nature's Boon and Master Alchemist, since if my utility flasks are going to have 100% uptime, I might as well have 20% increased effect. As a result, my flasks currently have around 80% increased effect on me. Now, one of the biggest upsides of the Mage Blood, the most expensive and most powerful unique item in Path of Exile, possibly not accounting for the prices of Hateforge, is that it gives you permanent flask uptime, and that you can enkindle your flasks for massive effect. It's true that when min-maxed, Mage Blood means 95% effective flasks on you, and I can't do any flask charge gain shenanigans like I might be able to with a Watcher's Eye. But 80% increased effect and permanent uptime flasks is still pretty darn close. And this is a lot more achievable than a mage blood. All you have to do is take replenishing remedies, careful conservationist, and natural remedies. From there, make sure you have nature's boon and make sure you have alchemist's genius. Finally, put a flask mod on your belt. It can either be increased charges gain or increased duration. After that, you should be good to go with most low charge flasks. You can run alchemist versions of higher charge flasks, but you'll need a little bit of extra flask duration and maybe two flask mods on your belt if you want to use something like a basalt flask 100% of the time. But if you just want to flex on your friends and say, I league started with a mage blood, then playing Pathfinder is a great way to do it. Part of the reason that poisonous concoction deals so much damage as a skill is it has overlaps. It's a ground targeted shotgunning projectile skill. This is why I'm running both greater multiple projectiles and greater volley. The projectiles do all overlap. The AoE breakpoints that I found for this are 26 and 36%. 36 would guarantee overlaps with Awakened GMP. And there are rare cases where I don't quite get overlaps according to testing someone did on Reddit. According to my own subjective experiences, it feels like bosses die, and I'm not too concerned beyond that. I did some basic testing, it wasn't super scientific, but it did seem to align with what the post said. Luckily, you get 30% increased AoE from your Pathfinder Ascendancy, so unless you're using Awakened GMP, you don't actually have to worry about getting Area of Effect. And one question that I've got a lot is, how do you solve mana on this build, and how do you fit in all your auras? This is why I'm using Devouring Diadem. There are alternatives. You could use a Covenant, spend life instead of mana, have higher flat damage, though that does come with a cost of you spending your life and needing better life recovery. This would allow you to use a rare helmet with mana reservation efficiency, and possibly attack reduced mana cost. Ultimately, it's two different ways to get to the same goal. When I was checking in POB, Switching the Diadem for Rare Helmet, and switching the Dendrobate for Covenant didn't noticeably change my DPS by all that much in one direction or another, nor did it shift my survivability by all that much. So ultimately, I went with a Double Corrupted Dendrobate to not have to worry about mana for all my secondary skills rather than just Poisonous Concoction itself. Which leads me into one very important point about using the Dendrobate. It gives your poisons two additional bonuses. The first is if you have 300 Dexterity, you gain increased poison damage. This is a generic increase that stacks with all your other increases. 
so while it's certainly nothing to ignore, it's not super super impactful. And second of all, if you like stacking poisons on enemies, if you have 150 int or more, then you get increased poison duration. These rolls have fairly high ranges. If you're using a corrupted dendrobate like mine, don't worry too much about it, but if you're using one that isn't corrupted, try to get good rolls. If you're going to use dendrobate over covenant, do be sure that you have at least 300 dexterity and 150 intelligence. So what have I done with a build thus far? I used it as my league starter, and I very quickly got into red maps, where my damage did feel like it fell off. This was probably because I had a 4-link dendrobate. So I farmed for a little bit, swapped to a 5-link dendrobate, and my damage felt fine in early reds. It fell off again by tier 16s, but a 6-link solved that, and at that point I was already having no trouble doing simple bosses like Eater of Worlds, Searing Exarch, Black Star, and let's just forget the other one. So if you're going to play Poisonous Concoction on League Start, I suggest getting a 6-link as early as possible. I also felt a little bit squishy to bosses until I capped my spell suppression. This is your friendly reminder that Revenge of a Hunted gives you 10% spell suppression when you're on full life, and it's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking your suppression's capped when it's not. Then you take a big hit and you die, or almost die, because you didn't realize you weren't on capped suppression. Once I fixed that, things became pretty smooth. This has been a great league starter. The build is neither slow nor squishy. The playstyle takes a little bit of getting used to. Once you do, you'll barely notice it at all. It's far easier to play than something like Corrupting Fever. Having permanent flasks gives the build a massive amount of versatility. Evasion and armor too low? Wear evasion and armor flasks. Don't want to worry about res? Wear resistance flasks. Maybe you need some more damage? Want to go crit? Well, I don't really advise going crit, but if you want more damage, a sulfur flask will be very helpful. Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder has been an absolutely phenomenal league starter. The bossing is plenty acceptable. I wouldn't take it into uber bosses. For anything short of that, the single target has never really felt bad to me. But I'll get into a little bit more about that later. Next up, I want to talk about crafting the gear and what exactly I'm wearing, of course not counting the things I've already gone into. Before I do though, a quick reminder that if you've been finding this video helpful, maybe you already learned something about Pathfinder, be sure to give it a like, and if your friend is wondering what to league start or what to reroll to because their league start sucked, be sure to link it to them, and hopefully they'll have a few ideas. For more content, get subscribed, as I'm going to be exploring Harvest a bit more and talking about some money-making strategies that have been working for me in 319. Or if you want to see something immediately, I recently released a video about why MMOs and stories lose me over on my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts. You can click through the card or look in the description below. Before I get back to talking about crafting and gearing, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. But more about that at the end. For now, what am I wearing and why am I wearing it? To start with, I've already covered the Devouring Diadem and the Dendrobate in the Mechanics section. If you missed that, feel free to go back now. Alternatively, if you wanted to use the Covenant and a Rare Helmet, you'd use the Covenant and roll your helmet with Mana Reservation Efficiency so that you can fit in all of your auras. Ultimately, your mana will be a little bit tighter than Diadem, and all your other skills won't have Blood Magic, so it could get a little bit awkward. But I've seen enough builds on Peering Ninja do it that I'm sure it's viable even if it isn't what I'd do. For the Amulet, you have a lot of options. You can either go with something like a Strangle Gasp, and use it as a gap filler. Need more resistances or max res? Put it on your anointment. Need more damage? Put it on your anointment. Need more life? Put it on your anointment. Or you can go with a rare like I did. I ended up getting plus one to chaos gems and some damage over time multiplier. This amulet wasn't super expensive early on, since I don't think that many people were in demand for it. I think I paid about one divine, maybe a bit less. And I've been pretty happy with it ever since. I'll keep using it either until I reroll or until I get a bad idea to shove it in the lake and try to make it better, probably bricking the item in return. Speaking of the lake, if you want a ring that is not a curse on hit ring and not a fractured ring, I strongly suggest using a lake ring. You're able to get absolutely massive amounts of life, resistances, and stats. In the case of my ring, I happen to have attack speed and life. The rest isn't really too valuable, but the ring does its job, boosts my health, and lets me do more damage. You could also use a curse on hit ring, either find it yourself in delve, purchase it from a delver, or roll it with harvest. Use Reforge a Rare Item with random modifiers, including a caster modifier on a Hunter base to get either Elemental Weakness or Despair on hit. Obviously, for this build, you'll want the Despair on hit, but you might be able to sell the Elemental Weakness for a handy profit. If you want to get really fancy, you can buy a Fractured Ring. What a Fractured Delve Ring will do is let you roll your Curse on Hit Ring to also have 15% damage over time multiplier from an Essence. For my boots, I knew I wanted an armor base, I needed Chaos Res, and boot prefixes are really easy. 
So I bought a fractured Chaos Res pair of armor boots, and I spammed them with Strength Essences. At the time, these were cheap. The actual essence you spam it with doesn't matter all that much, though. All that matters is you get a suffix which you find useful. In fact, you could even Chaos Spam, and it won't be all that expensive. From there, just make sure you have an open prefix, or make sure there is one using Eldritch Currency. And then use Suffixes Can't Be Changed, plus Veiled Chaos to put on move speed, craft life, and you're good to go. For gloves, I was looking for some accuracy, attack speed, and life. Nothing too fancy, since I'm already fixing my resistances very easily from my flasks. The best way to get something like this is either buy it from another player, or craft it for yourself using ROG. ROG is very good at making a whole bunch of T1 modifiers on an item, especially T1 mods like Accuracy, which do seem to be quite common. For the shield, this is how I'm capping my spell suppression. Truthfully, you can do it on your gloves, you can do it on your boots, you can do it almost anywhere. This just happens to be the way that I'm doing it. I also wanted a little bit of max res, and again, one of the best ways to do this is to buy it from ROG. It'll take a few attempts, you'll probably be able to sell the failures for a couple divines just like I did. And if you want to know more about how to craft with ROG, I have a video on that. Pricing has definitely changed since previous leagues, the mechanics of ROG still work exactly the same as they did before. For a belt, you have two main options. Of course, buying it is always an option. In this case, though, I'd probably roll a Stygian Vise with Essence of Envy, or use Harvest with Reforge More Likely. Reforge More Likely is great when you want to get mods that are a little bit unusual, such as a Flask mod. And after a few tries, you should be able to hit what you want, or at least something that's decently usable. Aim for Chaos Res, Life, and a Flask mod on the base belt, and just keep re-rolling it until either of those mods go away, in which case you roll again until you get them, or of course, until you hit something that you're happy with. In terms of my Cluster Jewel, Aberrant Fossils are still a great way to do clusters, not much has changed there, and I purchased all my normal jewels. Random mixes of things like Attack Speed, Damage with Poison, Max Life, Damage Over Time Multiplier, Accuracy, are all pretty standard and not that hard to get. I don't exactly remember how much I paid, but I don't think they're particularly expensive for four property jewels, and usually the three prop ones would only be a few chaos. So those were my experiences league starting Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder and crafting the gear. I do have a few tips and tricks before I go though. First is that Poisonous Concoction is a lob style skill. If you've ever used a grenade in a first person shooter, it feels exactly like that. It can often be a lot easier to aim close or into melee range than worry about enemies which are far away. It's very easy to face tank to get out maximum damage. This can be risky with certain modifiers, as enemies can hit pretty hard, especially in situations like minus max. Know what you can tank, and know what you can't. But if you know you can tank something, don't be afraid to and hit your life flask for a massive source of recovery. Poisonous Concoction scales off of your life flask, specifically the raw recovery amount from that life flask. What this means is you want a prefix with increased amount recovered, reduced recovery rate. How fast you recover that life does not matter for the skill, it's simply a percentage of the amount recovered. So for example, I have a high rolled concentrated flask. It's not quite perfect, could be a little bit better, I still do great damage, and being immune to bleeding for 12 seconds is nice enough that I wasn't really tempted to reroll my flask anytime soon. Finally, you're a pathfinder with prolif, and prolif is a very strong mechanic, so don't be afraid to simply run past enemies after you've already poisoned them. They'll very likely die behind you unless it's a tanky rare. Especially tanky rares like Chaos Weaver should be single targeted down and not just ignored. Normal trash mobs, it's perfectly safe to throw and only double back if you hear a nice sound of something dropping from your loot filter. So far, I've been able to run a great variety of content on Poisonous Concoction. I've done some delving up to about depth 2300. I've done several logbooks and they've gone pretty well. And of course, it's a very fast mapper build, either for investing in things like Grand Design Expedition and Harvest, or just mapping, rushing to the boss, and killing it as quickly as possible. Going into this, I heard that the bossing and single target was very bad, and I haven't found that to be the case. While I'm not necessarily breaking world speed records on my boss kills, I still had a pretty decent time on both the Maven and the Uber Elder. And all of this was before two rounds of gear upgrades that almost doubled my DPS. Overall, on the Maven, I probably played a little bit more carefully than I should have, and that did cost me some time. The Uber Elder, I knew what hits I could take, and the whole fight was super smooth. It took about four minutes, and that really isn't too bad for a league starter. All things considered, I'd take it down much faster if I was to do it in my current gear. So while this build wouldn't be my first choice for Ubers, I don't particularly care about doing Ubers anyway, and this would absolutely be my first choice of a League Start build. Of course, League Start's already passed, so should you be playing Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder? If you want something that's very smooth, that can do pretty much all content in the game, and is pretty easy to gear and play, 
I'd say yes. If you're feeling squishy, remember to focus on especially your physical mitigation. Armor, fizz taken as from a watcher's eye, and running taste of hate. If your flasks don't have 100% uptime, do be careful because that might strip away your resistances if you're using them to resist cap. Elemental ailments can also be a problem, which is why I just kept my league start choice of purity of elements. Sure, I could have fixed it via gear, different boots and all that, but it's easier to just not have to worry about it. Overall, there's a lot of room to gear for more damage from here. There's also a lot of room to gear for more defenses. I could use something like a Fizz Taken as chest, drop Purity of Elements, maybe grab Grace instead, and go for that route. Alternatively, I could go for a full damage chest, maybe something with a better, more offensive Double Corrupt, or maybe even a Double Corrupted Covenant. At this point though, I don't feel like I need to make any changes to my build. It already plays really smoothly. I'm already able to do the content that I want. It's not necessarily the absolute best build for Delirium. At that point, your damage does start to feel like it falls off. But I've been able to do difficulty 13 and 14 lakes with no issue, and I have been able to complete Delirium, even if I'm not really pushing very hard into it and running 100% Delirious maps. Sometimes, the skill that got away is the skill that you really should have tried sooner. That's definitely been my experiences with Poisonous Concoction Pathfinder. So I'm curious, does this leave you with any questions? Or have I maybe convinced you to immediately re-roll? Let me know some of your thoughts about the skill and the build in general down in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your support helps keep me independent and allows me to turn down things like sketchy mobile game sponsorships. You can do so for as low as $1 a month over on Patreon. Or if you want to support me completely for free, then you can join the community by hopping into my Discord, link below. If you want more content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, it's a place that I use to review games, ramble my way through video essays, and a lot more. Or of course, you can just click the suggested video in the card right now. I hope you learned something today, and maybe I'll see you again sometime soon.